Well, good morning, Lake Country Baptist Church and visitors. A little rainy day this morning, but thank you, God, for the rain. Amen. We're going to start off with a beautiful Christmas song this morning, so if you'd like to stand and grab a hymnal, we're going to turn to page 89. We're going to be singing, uh, Oh, Come All You Think. cooped up at home for 14 days like that drove me crazy <laughs> fortunately I didn't have the COVID my wife had that she had to suffer through that stuff but uh, I got blessed one of my good friends here at church told me COVID didn't want anything to do with me either so <laughs> thank you Peggy there's always somebody here to cheer me up you know? <laughs> it is good to see each and every one of y'all here this morning very glad to have y'all and I really when I have a special friend or visitor here that I don't want to embarrass him so I'm not going to really say anything about it but the guy sitting right back there Dale Swin <laughs> we graduated together and if he tells you anything bad about me then it was true <laughs> see what kind of friends I got here Dale <laughs> no but it is good to see all of you visitors not, I, didn't, I didn't mean to just point out one but it's always good to have a good friend to visit with you but uh, Visitor, we just welcome you back. Any opportunity you have to come visit with us, we just want you to come and, and fill in with us and share the blessings that you can receive here because this is a loving church and we just love to have you. you get the opportunity, Sunday school starts at 9 45. You get the chance here to come to Sunday school, we'll be glad to have you for that also. Got just a few announcements. At tonight's service, there will be a gift presentation to our staff. Wedding shower for Destiny Spurlock, Saturday, December 19th, 5.30, here at the church. Children's Church, don't you all have children in the Children's Church back here? Children's Church Christmas party will be December 20th during class time, so be sure to have your kids here that Sunday. Also, no night service will be December 20th on Sunday night, no night service. 
Also, the 23rd, Wednesday night, there will be no, uh, no service. Boy, I know that Brandon would love to hear this. J.C. Stone going to be coming home for the Christmas holiday. And he's been gone for a while. So he's going to be here the 23rd. Everyone's welcome to come to their home around 6.30 to 7 o'clock. I guess on the 23rd is when he's going to be home. So if you want to come by and see J.C., I know he'd be just tickled to death to see if he hadn't already got plans for Christmas. Come by and see J.C. Business meeting, December 27th. Any other announcements? Prayer request? I'm by the grace of you. Keep her in prayers. Pardon? Grace of you. Grace of you. She's back in the hospital again. <laughs> My grandchildren need your prayers. Uh, my MRI came back and they found it as normal as normal can be for me. Um, so we still don't know what's causing the twitching, but I'm pretty sure it's stress related. Um, but we also need to put Lily on the prayer list. Uh, she needs a lot of prayer right now. Uh, Kim, Gracie Elmy, I'll spell it for you. See Thank you. S S I O M N I E. That's my daughter in law is having back surgery Friday. Mm -hmm. John. <coughs> right here. Oh. I knew I heard something. My granddaughter, Casey Otwell, has COVID. Oh, okay. She probably looks that. Yeah. Sherry. Let's go ahead and keep Sherry Brentley on there. She's still really sick, not really feeling well. Okay. Um, put Richard on there for the day. He's going to be traveling up north to work, and the weather's getting really bad. Yeah. Pray for all the truck drivers and all the policemen and the uh, fire department folks that are having to deal with some of these issues with the COVID, with all that. Unruly people. Unruly. <laughs> Pray for the homeless people that are out in this cold weather. Kim, would you let these people up there, please? Mm -hmm. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for being here today, Lord, so that we can worship you today, Lord. And we ask you, Lord, you know what the needs of all these people that have been mentioned, that uh, they need you in their lives, and they need a, a helping hand, Lord. We ask of you to <coughs> do what you would do, because, uh, Lord, it's your will that's going to be done anyway. But we ask of you to, to put your hand down on these people and make them like you would have them be, Lord. We just love you for everything you're doing and thank you for it. Amen. 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 Get up turn to page 94. Page 94, we're going to sing the first, second, and fourth verse of Angels from the Realms of Glory.
songs, so y'all gonna have to pick it up. A little, little awkward. <laughs> Two or three. <laughs> All right, we'll get y'all a stand. We're gonna turn to page 118 for our offertory song. We're gonna be singing What Child Is This? Usher's Come on the Last Verse. <laughs> Loudly, please.
spooky thought, isn't it? For all of us, should be spooky to all of us because the Lord our God will not be denied. Yep. He holds us responsible. He holds us accountable. And our responsibility and our accountability to Him is that He leads us. We follow Him. We do what He tells us to do. We obey Him. We don't argue with Him. We don't tell Him what we want to do. We take from Him what He has for us and we live that way. Amen? Yeah. Well, that's, that changes the, the complexion of everything that we do, doesn't it? Amen. And so we need to learn that when the Lord speaks to us, we need to react to what He says. And there's only one of two options. It's either yes <coughs> or it's no. Pretty cut and dry in God's kingdom, you know? And so it's either yes or no. Maybe is a no to God. Amen? Amen? Think about that. I'll wait. Well, maybe you, you know, God's got a plan for you that's, and something that needs to be done immediately. And if you wait, that winter goes by and something don't get done. And y'all, we're going to give an account for every bit of that one of these days. And I think when we stand before the Lord, things are going to be brought up that we never even realized that it was Him trying to get us to do something that we didn't pay any attention to. So never dismiss what you feel inside what your heart says, what your mind says, because that's where God deals with us as individuals. Amen? Amen. Don't ever forget that. That's why the Bible tells us that He dwells in our heart, and it also tells us that we must have the mind of Christ. So that's what that's all about. That's just my first message this morning. Have your Bibles turn to the book of Matthew, book of Matthew chapter 2. We're going to be reading verses 1 through 11. The title of this message today is The Star of Bethlehem. Now, I've been hearing a lot about that star here lately, haven't you? Amen. So we're going to be talking about the Star of Bethlehem uh, for just a, a little bit. Uh, chapter 2 of the book of Matthew, verses 1 through 11. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, Behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and, and the scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, art not the least among the princes of Judea, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privately called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to, uh, to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child, and when you have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were coming to the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense, and myrrh. Thank you, Father, for the reading of your word. Speak to us as only you can do. And help us to hear. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. In the last few weeks, like I was talking about, how many of y'all have heard about the, the Bethlehem star that is yeah. fixing to appear that we're going to be able to see? And uh, astrologers have uh, really made a big ado, uh, uh, a deal about uh, the Bethlehem star. It's supposed to be visible in the in the evening and night sky on December the 21st. So mark that time on your calendar and, and make sure you go look at it and see it. And it's an event that they can explain happily uh, the, uh, uh, that is the alignment of 
of the two largest planets in our solar system, which is Jupiter and uh, Saturn. And uh, they, they really think they've solved the mystery of the star of Bethlehem. They've even gone to the point where I, I was reading some articles on this stuff, and I, did, I read stuff all the time, but I was reading some articles on this stuff because it sparked an interest in me, and I thought, well, wow, is this really what happened at that, that, that time when Christ was born? Is this really? And, and one of them from way back, this is supposed to reoccur every 800 years or so, and, and, and somebody reasoned out that on, on, in our calendar date, on December the 25th, in 2 B.C., that actually happened. So naturally, the, the assumption is this is what the wise men saw. Well, that's all fine and dandy, but you know what? I don't know about y'all, but I just don't need science to prove to me what the Bible says. Amen. I don't need science to spend waste their time and 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 look at these signs and look at and trace all of this stuff back and and tell me something that I'm supposed to take and believe by faith whether they can prove it or not. Amen? And so we need to understand that this is what's kind of going on right now. Uh, that that, uh, that science is, is really promoting this. Uh, I'm going to be in Branson supposedly the 21st if the Lord don't come take us home before then. And I do plan on looking at this. I want to see something that only happens every 800 years. I don't want to miss that. And so uh, it's kind of like when Haley's Comet came through. Uh, I, I just, uh, you know, I want to see those things. But uh, when you look at these things in the in the scripture, uh, the 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 Old Testament, these three I say three, they brought three gifts. So we don't know how many of these wise men there were, uh, and they they weren't necessarily kings, but they were actually uh, men that were uh, that were probably in, in in government in the nation they were from. They don't even give the specific nation. Uh, it just tells that they were from the east and that they they had, were following this star. Now these men were, and re, what they were, were astrologers. They were people who studied and read the stars. And, and what's so ironic about this is that uh, that uh, in, in, uh, in Israel, Israelite history and all through the Old Testament, they were forbidden to even uh, acknowledge the the reasoning of the astrologers. They were they were lumped in a category with magicians and soothsayers and and all of these people that that were supposed to be able to tell the future by reading signs and and the stars were no different. And we still have astrologers today. How I many? Uh, I, I don't need to ask that. Uh, but anyway, there's a lot of people who read their horoscope and stuff today, and they actually, every once in a while, your horoscope will, will say something that might be kind of happening in your life, and you say, oh, wow, there's something to that. Well, let me tell you, there's not nothing to that unless God's in it. Amen? Amen. There's not anything to that. The stars are the stars. He hung them all. He hung the moon. He, he hung every bit of it. And he did, there, there are signs, there are things that we can see. We know our constellations, they don't really move. We think they do, but they don't. The earth moves and the earth tilts and they're in different positions in the sky. And we know that there's, there's things from science today and we know all these things. You say, well, you sure know a lot about something you're not supposed to know a whole lot about. I went to school. Here, Bright Star, and I'm kind of interested in science. So, uh, now what's so funny about that? <laughs> it's not a school there anymore. But, but when I got to looking at this and got to think, about, Lord, what, what is this that, that you want us to see in the scripture? What is this that, that has sparked uh, my interest in this, in this star of Bethlehem that they so proudly? Uh, call this and so he sent me to this scripture and I began to read this scripture and, and but instead of answers there's questions that starts to pop up and when I was looking at this I thought so so why does the Lord give these men these men a sign the the, the astrologers that were linked with the magicians and the soothsayers that he had commanded his children to stay away from we see them in, in, in the book of Daniel. We see them in Ezekiel. We see these men that have been called upon by these kings to tell them things. And we see in the, in the case of Daniel, where Daniel is in contact and communication with the Holy God that's a revealer of all secrets. And, and he, he trumps everything that they can do. And so they, they, can't, they can't hold a handle to, to God and the wisdom that God gives his people and, and what they can see because he don't give them visions through these stars. But on this particular day, he put a star in the sky. 
God hung all the stars. It wasn't no big deal to him to say, I don't need a star to pop up out there right now. And I need these people right here because they're looking at the sky. I need them to see that star. And I believe with all my heart that's the miraculous power of a, of a holy God that can put things and change things and put things right before our eyes that we can see and wonder about. Amen. You know what? I love wonder. I love the spirit of wonder. I love to see a little child as they wander around and their eyes get big as they see something that's brand new to them. How many of you ever, and you know what, we get to be old fuddy daddies like the rest of us. We think we've seen everything, so it takes a lot more to wow us. Well, let me tell you what, God's still in the wowing business and he never ceases to wow me. He never ceases to show who he is in his church. He never ceases to show his power. He never ceases to show his his supremacy. He never ceases to show that He is God, that He is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings and the God of all glory and the Creator of everything He had. We, we have. He never ceases to amaze me when He shows us those things. Yeah. Amen. So why would He He show these people a sign? Why would He show these pagan priests, if you will? assemble and, and lead them in a direction. Why would he do that? Well, because God's always doing things we don't really understand. Amen? Yeah, amen. He really is. And you know what? Uh, people back at that time didn't really know what and understand it. And, and just like where Jesus was going to be born was so available to them, they chose not to see that. Mm -hmm. They chose not to be looking in Bethlehem. They weren't really, they were always looking for a Messiah, but they really weren't looking for a Messiah. Uh-oh. You know what this means? We're always talking about Christ coming back. We're always talking about He, he could come any minute. He, he can come any day. But do we really believe that? Do you really believe that Jesus Christ could come in five minutes? In ten minutes? Today? Do we really? Boy, y'all know what I'm fixing to do now, don't you? If we really believe that, why are we living like we believe that? Uh -uh. Well, that has a whole new thing. idea and a new perspective on everything, doesn't it? See, I, I always brag about sitting in my window looking at the east and watching that sun come up, which I got to admit is getting less and less frequent because I'm starting to sleep later and later because me is working me harder and harder, okay? <laughs> but anyway, but listen to me. It's one thing to sit at the window and watch the sun come up and think about Jesus coming. It's another one to live your life every day like he is coming. Amen. 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 So why in the world did he take these pagan priests and he'd give them a sign and the whole world, nobody else saw it but them? That's why I know this star is not that star that that was. We have no record in the Bible that anybody else even saw this star. Amen? Amen. You know why? Because he was leading those people. He was leading those people to a particular place in a particular time to show them a particular thing for a particular reason. Amen. The same reason you may be here today. You may be here today at this time on this day for a particular purpose, for a particular reason because God has you here so he can tell you something that he wants you to hear and you can respond to that. Amen. I won't tell you what these people did. When they saw this star, not only did they respond to it, they knew what they were looking for when they saw the star. Amen? Because when they found Herod, guess what they said? We're looking for the one who is born King of the Jews. So not only did God show them a sign, He gave them this special wisdom that they knew when they saw that sign, this is from the God of all gods, this is from the God of all glory, because these pagan priests believed in more than one God. Amen? Read Daniel. He'll tell you all about it. Uh, 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 Nebuchadnezzar, he, he believed God was the God of gods. And these people came from this same place. They, they believed these same things. 
And they were people who read the star. So, so why? Why in the world did he use these people, these men that were Gentiles? They weren't even Jews. Amen. Well, I think we, we hear the answer to it in the song. Joy to the world. The Lord has come. See, Jesus didn't just come. <laughs> he just didn't come to the Jews. He came from the Jews. Amen? Why? Because of the promise God had given to Abraham that through you, there's going to become a blessing. I'm going to paraphrase this. And all the nations of the earth are going to be blessed from your seed. Amen? Amen. The, the Jewish people came from Abraham. But not only the Jewish people came from Abraham. Amen? Not only the Jewish people came from Abraham. I was told somebody last night that when, uh, or, 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 or it was yesterday, I think me and Troy were talking, and I said, you know what? Abraham had Isaac when he was 100 years old, and Sarah was 90. And he had Isaac, the son of promise. He had already sent Ishmael off because he was, he was a, a fabrication of, of the minds of men and women. But Isaac was the promised seed that God had given to Abraham. But listen, after Sarah died, Abraham was over 100 years old. Did you know he remarried and had several children after that? Did y'all know that? He did. And the Bible said to separate them from the seed of promise, he sent them away with gifts to the east. Ooh, listen to this. Now here we come when the Messiah is born. When the King of kings and the God of all glory takes on a robe of flesh and he has a virgin birth in Bethlehem, who does God send a sign to? Those people who have been given <laughs> gifts and sent away from the Son of Promise. But guess what? And Brother Mike, here they come. From the east, bearing gifts to the Son of Promise. Hallelujah. What's the say, Brother Gary, where in the world are you going with this? The Bible's not silent about these things. The Bible is full of the, of the promises of God that He has made not only to the Jewish people, but to the Gentile nations. Y'all, whether you know it or not, that's who we are. We're Gentiles. And the promise of God has not always been for the Jews. We got it in our head, this is all for the Jews. No, it's not. For God so loved the world that He gave us His only begotten Son. Jew, Gentile, man, woman, white, black. It don't make any difference what nationality, what skin color. It don't make any difference to God. He came for all mankind. Amen. He came to be King of kings and Lord of lords and the Savior to a lost and dying world. And if any of these people, anyone, anybody that's ever been born wants to go to glory to be with Jesus Christ, they got to accept Him as their Savior. That's why He was born. Amen. So He could die for us and make that possible for me and you today. Y'all, this is not a light thing. It's not a little thing. It's a great thing that only God could do. And he did. He made it possible. So when you look at this, and you look uh, at this, this star, and you and, and all of these things, uh, why why the star? Because that's what these men were looking at. Amen. Sometimes God puts a, puts puts a message right before your eyes because you're looking at a certain thing, and He uses that certain thing to talk to you. You believe that? Well, that's the way God is, isn't it? Amen. And so the God uses God uses these things, uh, but He didn't He didn't he, he He didn't do this so they could be confirmed that they were really good astrologers. Amen. That they could brag about uh, we saw a star and it told us a message and it was true. That ain't what they said. Amen. He didn't show them that. He didn't give them this information so they could brag and be arrogant and prideful about how much they know and how much knowledge they have. He gave it to them 
so they could be drawn to Jesus Christ. So they could behold the Son of God. So they could come and worship Him. Now let me tell you what. They left their native land knowing who they were looking for. They had to follow the direction of this star because they didn't know really where they were going. Because see, they didn't know they were going to Bethlehem. Herod knew it, but they didn't. And they left their native country <coughs> bearing gifts to carry to this king. <coughs> Amen. You see this picture? You see God in this? You see how great and big and awesome he is? How he sees the, the end and the beginning and he sees everything in between. He sees my life, your life. He knew me when I was conceived in the womb. He knows my final breath. He knows my journey in between. He knows me and he knows you. Yeah. And he's given us a sign to follow. He's given us a path. If we'll but follow that path, it will lead us somewhere. Are you on that path today? Jesus describes it. Oh, this ain't even in my notes, y'all. This is the Lord talking to us right now. He said, I've got those two paths. One of them's big and broad, and there's lots of folks on, but there's one of them that's a little narrow. Why? Because it's designed for you to follow Him. Yeah. It's designed for you not to look to the right or the left and see this mass of people. It's made for you to look at Him as you follow Him. Yeah. There ain't a whole lot on that road, according to Christ. The Bible says that He enlarged the mouth of hell. He didn't intend hell for us. He made it for Satan and his minions. But there's so many people who would rather follow Satan than follow God that that road to the mouth of hell that opened up is broad. God help us to see the star. Help us to see the Savior and the Son of God. And to get on that road as we follow that star and worship Him, adore Him, seek Him, find Him, and observe Him. Amen? Amen. Verse 2 in this text says, uh, saying, Where is the King? that is born king of the Jews. For we have seen a star in the east, and we have come to worship him. What are you here for today? What does this holiday season mean to you? Is it all about trees and tinsels and gifts and wrapping? Or is it about him who was born king of the Jews? Is it about a time to see kids giggling, their eyes open wide? There's nothing wrong with that. As long as you do it in the light that the reason for this is Jesus Christ. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. And so in verse 2 he said, they said, we have come to worship them. And, 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 and look at what Herod's reaction was. You see it? This is what he said. When Herod the king heard these things, he was troubled. I'm the king of the Jews. I don't know where this fellow is. And you know what? He had the audacity to ask the men of God. Amen? He had the audacity to ask them, the chief priests and the scribes, of the people together and he demanded them where would Christ be born <laughs> and they told him it ain't like they couldn't know it it ain't like they didn't know it 
It's like they didn't care that they knew it. God's chosen people didn't care. They were living in the moment. They were living in their own lust. They were living in their own power. They were living in a time that I love to call ignorance. And they were so comfortable in their ignorance, they didn't want anything to rock the boat. You know, I got a lot of folks living today, they're so comfortable in their ignorance. They're so comfortable in what they think they know, not what thus says the Word of God. They're comfortable in their ignorance and what some yo-yo has told them they ought to believe. And all the time, it's written in the Word of God who He is, where He's coming from, what He's doing, what your reaction is, what He wants to do with you, what He wants to give you, how He wants to save you, how He's died for you, how He wants to forgive you, how your sins can be white as snow because of Him. He has redeemed us all with His precious blood. He has saved us to the uttermost. But you've got to look at Him and worship Him and say, Lord, save me. But in our comfortable ignorance, we don't pursue him that way. We just take for granted that he'll do it for us. <laughs> oh my. None of this sometimes knows to tell him. He's king of the Jews. Now isn't it notable that no one else saw this star but these three men? We all don't get to see this star on the 21st if it's not cloudy. But the Bible's don't say anybody else saw this star. But the, three, the men that he wanted to see it, they saw it. And, the, and unlike the star, we're going to see the 21st. It's just going to sit there. And I don't know how long it's going to be. The other way I, I hear them talk, the window for seeing is very short. These folks left a country walking. Are you listening to me? Now, I'm going to go to Missouri here pretty soon, the Lord willing, and it's going to take me about five and a half to six hours to drive there. If I had to walk, do you know how long it would take me to get there? Days. 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 These people is walking. Not only are they walking, I don't know where they got camels, I don't know where they got donkeys, I don't know what they got, but they're carrying gifts. <laughs> Gold is a heavy gift. I don't know how much they brought, but it's heavy. Frankincense and myrrh, and all these are symbolic of his deity, his Christ, his kingdom, his gold. Amen. Right. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. But the frankincense and the myrrh, the myrrh is the anointing for his death. Mm -hmm. And the frankincense is to cover the stench of his sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And that's what they brought. Mm -hmm. Amen. And they found this king. <laughs> they wasn't following the star. This, this is not about a star. Mm -hmm. This is about light. Amen? Amen. It's about light. Amen. It's about light. And you need to understand that. It's always about light. It always has been about light. It always will be about light. Isaiah chapter 9. Listen to what this says in verse 2. You don't have to turn there. Just jot it down. And in and, uh, and Isaiah 9 and 2, the people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shined. God has got a light. He wants to shine on lost people, lost humanity of every nation, of every kindred, kindred, of every language, of every color, of every state in the United States and every country of the world. He has a light he wants to shine. You know why? Because we live in darkness. And he wants to shine a light into that darkness. For what? So we can see. Have you seen that light? Have you seen his light? Amen. Isaiah, who wrote that a long time ago, y'all. And Isaiah tells us more about the Christmas story that we saw. Charlie Brown's Christmas even quotes Isaiah. Amen. Amen. Chapter 42 of Isaiah. I'm just going to 
read around in this just a little bit so you can understand where I'm fixing to go. 42 and 1. Behold my servant, whom I uphold, mine elect, in whom my soul delighted. He talked about Jesus, by the way. I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. Hmm. Wow, the king of the Jews. He's coming forth to do something for the Gentiles. To bring judgment, he says. He says here. When you look on further in, in Isaiah 42 and verse 6, he says, I, the Lord, have called thee in righteousness, and he's talking about Christ again, and will hold thine hand and will keep thee and will give thee for a covenant of the people, listen to this, for a light to the Gentiles. You, you want to know why he showed his star? To Gentile men. He's getting ready to fulfill this. He's getting ready to shed his light on all of us so we can see this light. And don't stop there. That's just part of it. And, and he goes on in verse 7 and 42 to open the blind eyes, to bring out the prisoners from the prison, and them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. You know where people are right now? They're sitting in darkness and they're in a prison. They don't know it. They think they're just free and able to do anything they want to. And the whole time, they're living in darkness. They're living in the trap of Satan. Satan is darkness. And those are the spirits we fight with. The spirit of light and the spirit of darkness. Light always shines brightest in the darkness. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. The light of God supersedes the darkness of Satan. Amen. Amen. This whole book is about freedom. It's all about it. It's all about it. It's all about who we can be in Him and the provision He has made for every one of us to come to Him. He wants us to. Can you think about this? The God of creation, the one that said, let there be light, and there was the one that said, let there be dry land, there was the one who created the dogs and the cats and animals and the ones who created man. And He wants us to have a fellowship with Him. Ooh, glory. That don't make you happy. I don't know I will. And you know what we do? We get comfortable in our ignorance. And we think we're something we're not. And we think we're going, we think we're going somewhere where we're not going because we're not going the right way. There's only one way there. He was born that day. And he's still that way. Nothing's changed about him. Amen. And so he goes on, let me read you one more verse and then we'll move on and close. And he's in verse 16 of chapter 42 of Isaiah. And I will bring the blind by a way that they knew not. You know what the blind people here are? It's people who have eyes, but they can't see nothing. Same way with the deaf. There's people who got ears, but they can hear nothing. That's kind of the way lost people are. They see and they hear, but they don't, they don't understand. They don't know. And so he says, he says, uh, I will lead them in paths that they have not known. I will make darkness light before them, and I will make crooked things straight. These things will I do unto them, and I will not forsake them. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. You know what Jesus Christ promised to us all? I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I'll make your crooked path straight. He ain't talking about making life easy for you. He's talking about taking you off the broad road of destruction and putting you on the straight and narrow way. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. He can do that. He has the power. He has the authority to do that. There's only one thing that hinders the Lord Jesus Christ's authority with mankind. You know what that is? You. Yourself. Your own will. You have to say yes or no. Might and maybe just say a no. You have to say those things to God because His invitation is always open. i got to move on. And then I'm going to finish here real quick, I promise. Luke chapter 2, verse 30 and 32. There's no place more evident than in this old man that worked in the temple. Named Simon. Old man. 
old man. But he, he lived his life in anticipation of a promise that God had made to him. And this promise God had made to this man was that you will not see death until you have held mm -hmm. the Lord's anointed. I want you to listen to this. So Mary and Joseph get Jesus and they take him to the temple to do the custom for the newborn child. And the Spirit of God told this man, He's here. Amen. <laughs> I get to tell y'all that today. He's here. Amen. The Spirit told him that. And with great excitement, he goes out. He didn't introduce himself. He didn't tell, tell he didn't waste his time. He went straight to that baby. You know why? Because he knew who that baby was. <laughs> he went straight to that baby and listen to what he says in verse 30. For mine eyes have seen your salvation which thou hast prepared before the face of all people. Now look what he says. A light to lighten the Gentiles. Amen. A light to lighten me and you. And the glory of thy people, Israel. Amen. Now, that light still shines. That glory is still available. That salvation is still present. And it still depends on you. Will you follow that star? Will you walk into the light? Jesus said it very well. In, cha in John chapter 8, verse 12, he says, bluntly, <laughs> I like bluntness from Christ, don't y'all? <laughs> I am the light of the world. Yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> he didn't say I was the light of the world. He didn't say I might be the light of the world. He didn't say I'll be the light of the world sometime. He said it then and he still says it today. It still rings true. I am the light of the world. <coughs> he that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. There's a lot said today about people who claim to be saved and walk in darkness. This scripture pretty much tells us, doesn't it? You can't walk in the light and darkness at the same time. Let me put it in old South Arkansas phraseology. You either are or you ain't. You're either living for Him or you're not living for Him. You're either on the straight and narrow or you're on the broad way. That's the only two choices you got. <coughs> you either say yes to Jesus or you say no to Jesus. And you make Him Lord of your life. Y'all, He don't settle for a part of your life. Amen. He, he don't settle for being a piece of you. He says this, I will dwell in you and you will dwell in me. You'll be a walking light in the darkness as you walk in my light because of my salvation for you. Where are you walking today? What's he told you today? What's he showing you today? Well, I can tell you one thing that you all need to know. Unless you come to Jesus and are saved by Jesus Christ, you will in no wise enter into glory. Amen. That is a fact. We need to walk in the light. We need to come to the light. We need to receive the light. And we need to travel in the light. We're the Gentiles. And that light came to us. There's going to be a time 
when the time of the Gentiles is gone. That means we're not going to dominate anymore. We're going to lose a lot of our power. But we have it right now. And the greatest power we have is the Gentile church. It's the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the power of God that it generates unto salvation of the lost soul. Would you receive Him today? Would you hear Him today? Would you see Him today? Will you let Him become the light in your darkness and take that darkness away? He's with it. But are you? Would you stand for us? It's going to be a time of invitation. These altars are open for prayer. I'll be available if you'd like to talk to me. Salvation is here. If you'd like to be saved, I'd be glad to share with you what the Bible tells us about salvation and what you need to do. If you're here today and you're looking for a church home and the Lord has shown you you need to be a part of this, well, you just come on. We'd love to have you. Close your eyes, please. Bow your heads, please. May your mind be only on Christ, on the Savior of the world. See, He didn't stay a baby in a manger. He didn't come to be a baby in a manger. He came to die for me and you. He came for a purpose. <coughs> to pay the price for our salvation. To receive the wrath of the Father reserved for us. He was persecuted. He was ridiculed. He was insulted. They sought to kill him numerous times. They didn't even know he just came to die anyway. And he made a statement one time. He said, nobody takes my life. I give it. No greater love has anybody shown. No greater love can anybody know than the love that the God of all glory who left His throne in heaven took on a robe of flesh and became one of us. He could redeem us from a curse that we caused for ourselves. <coughs> I don't know where you'll find a prettier love story anywhere in the world than the love that Jesus Christ has for me and you. He's no respecter of persons. He don't love one above another. But He honors obedience. And he seeks right now for you to come to him and say, Lord, I surrender. I, I give it to you, Lord. I worship you. I worship you, my Savior, my King, my God. Thank you. Thank you. We celebrate his birth. Thank you, Jesus being born. You weren't born in sin. You weren't shaken in iniquity. Your father was the Holy Ghost. Thank you. For all you do. For all you've done. For all you will do. Why in the world would anyone want to reject such a salvation as this? At this moment, he's praying.
praying for every one of us. Did you know that? At this moment, at this moment, He's looking at your heart. He's looking in your mind. He's looking at your soul. And He's lifting you up to the Father. He's interceding for you right now. He's calling on power that He's got for you. All you have to do is receive it from Him. As you call upon His name. Now there's still people at the altar pray. There's people that's bringing petitions to a holy God right now. There's people here right now who are hurting, who are afraid, who are nervous, who are, don't know what's going to happen next. But I know one who does. And he will comfort you. He will give you peace. He will take away a torment from your soul and your heart. He'll take away all the clouds. He'll take away all the doubt. And all He'll do is say, I love you. And I'm in control. In our language, He'll say, I got this. Just give it to me. I'll have it. And He'll be with you. He'll be with you in sickness. He'll be with you in death. He'll be with you in anguish. He'll be with you in pain. He'll be with you as your family turns on you. You don't know why. He'll be there. <coughs> and He'll just love you. star of Bethlehem. They followed it from the east and they followed it to Herod's temple and as soon as Herod sent them to Bethlehem, guess what they saw? The star. And it was right over the top of the baby Jesus. I don't think the star is going to do that to you. Amen. I don't think this star is capable of that, but that star was. Why? Because he's the light of the world. He said, I'm showing you my light and I'm in, I want to be your light. Follow me. I love y'all. Thank y'all for letting me be your preacher. Thank you for coming today and letting me preach to you. Amen. But praise the God of all glory. Amen. For His wondrous love. Because without that, there would none of us even be here today. Thank God for His wonderful church, the body of Christ, the believers. You are the gathering that makes the church. Amen. And that's why He said, don't forsake that. Keep gathering because there's fellowship to be had. There's laughter to be had. There's joy to be had. There's tears to be shed. There's prayers to be prayed. There's love to be given. Thank God for His church. The church of our Savior, Jesus Christ. I want to be a part of that. Don't you? I love y'all. Y'all have a great uh, week, rest of the day. And uh, don't give our service starts tonight. Five o'clock, and we're gonna be get, we're gonna be giving away some gifts here tonight, and I look forward to doing that and and a celebration of those who, <coughs> who uh, do a lot around here. And how I, you know you hate to point out four or five because there's so many that does things, but we're just gonna kind of focus on a few tonight and uh, and let them know how much we appreciate. It. But y'all try to be here tonight. We we love y'all. And uh, it, uh, we had a Christmas party last night that almost got violent. <laughs> and uh, there's a one particular man in here that really stirred up a lot of trouble. And uh, but anyway, we're not going to call any names. But anyway, uh, we just want to let him know we saw that. Anyhow, we, I love y'all, and and thank thank God for the joy of living for Jesus Christ. It's a great Brother joy. Gary, yes, ma'am. I have a little bit to add to that. No, I ain't going to let you say that. I, I do. I, I got to. Play. Um, after I was given the neckties that the man received, um, I was given the neckties to make a quilt or use in my sewing room. 
And I came out here and I, I presented that box to my husband and I told him, I said, the men in the church all had a party for you and they took up this box just for you. <laughs> hey, I'm telling you, I'm just glad there wasn't a note with that box of ties that didn't say, uh, take these, go out and hang yourself with them. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I love y'all. He had to put one on. He says, I can't get it there. <laughs> <laughs> Brother Mike, troublemaker, would you dismiss it? <laughs> Lord, we come to you just thanking you for what you've done in our lives. Thanking you that you brought, you brought the children of Israel out of bondage in Egypt. You, you made a covenant with Abraham that his descendants would be blessed. And they would, uh, out of his loins would come a Savior. Father, we trace that through Scripture and we carry it all the way down to Jesus. And he said that he is the light of the world. And he is our liberty. He is our strength. He is our glory. He is our salvation, our victory. He is the I am. Whatever we need, he is. He's our healer, our protector, our provider. He is what we need. Father, if we'd have needed a lawyer, he'd have sent us a lawyer. If he'd have needed an accountant, he'd have sent us an accountant. But he sent us a savior because we had a sin problem. And because that's, that Savior could solve that problem. And He did on the cross. Amen. So Father, we thank You for all of these things. We thank You that You love the Jews enough to give them and make them Your chosen people. We thank You that You gave them the move the men of old to write the Bible. And You used the apostles in the New Testament to share it. The man who brought us the New Testament and that Father that translated it so that we have it today. Father, thank You, thank You, thank You. In Jesus' name, we pray and we thank Your Son. Glory and honor and praise to Him. All of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.